So, you cleaned your diet. Your continuous glucose monitor looks smooth. You feel better than you have in years. And then your A1C comes back a little higher. That single number gets a megaphone. Before you change what's clearly working, here's the truth most people never hear. A1C is not only a sugar report card, it also depends on how long your red blood cells live. And there's a simple calculation that lets us adjust for that. Both when cells live shorter than normal and when they live longer than normal. I'll preview the math now, then show you exactly how to use it, plain English first. A1C reflects two things at the same time, your glucose exposure and the lifespan of your red blood cells. If those cells live longer, as often happens in a calmer, low inflammation environment, they have more time to pick up sugar tags. So your A1C can look a little higher even when your day-to-day -day glucose is excellent. If they live shorter, A1C can actually look deceptively low. Same glucose, different time on the road, different number. Here's the calculation you came for. Think of 106 days as a standard red cell lifespan. We can normalize anyone's lab A1C to that standard by using this simple formula. Adjusted A1C is approximately your lab A1C multiplied by 106 divided by your red cell lifespan in days. Now let's make it real with two quick examples. If someone's red cells live longer, say 120 days, the adjustment is lab A1C times 106 over 120. That's about 0.883. So the adjusted A1C is lower than the lab result. If the lab A1C is 6.2%, the adjusted number is roughly 6.2 times 0.883, which lands around 5.48%. Same glucose exposure, more time for glycation, normalize the time, and the number makes sense. Flip it the other way. If someone's red cells live shorter, say 80 days, the adjustment is lab A1C times 106 over 80. That's about 1.325. So the adjusted A1C is higher than the lab result. If the lab A1C is 6%, the adjusted value is roughly 7.95%, which keeps us from being falsely reassured when cells are turning over fast. One formula, two directions, clean and consistent. Let's bring this back to your real life. How do you use this if you don't know your red cell lifespan? Most people don't. So here's the practical path. First, anchor in reality, your daily glucose. If you wear a CGM, look at your mean glucose and time in range. If you use a meter, pull a solid two weeks of readings. Second, convert your average glucose into an A1C-like number called GMI. Your CGM app often does this automatically. If not, the math is simple. GMI equals 3.31 plus 0.2392 times your average glucose in milligrams per deciliter. Third, compare GMI to your lab A1C. If your GMI and your daily trace look great, but your lab A1C sits higher by roughly half a point or more, that's a big clue that red cells might be living longer. If your GMI and your daily trace look worse while A1C looks better than it should, that hints your cells might be living shorter. Here's a helpful bonus for data-minded viewers. If you treat GMI as the adjusted A1C because it reflects your real-world average glucose, you can do a quick back-of-the-napkin estimate of lifespan at home. Solve the same formula for lifespan. Lifespan is approximately 106 times your lab A1C divided by your GMI. So if your lab A1C is 6.2 and your GMI is 5.5, your estimated lifespan would be around 106 times 6.2 divided by 5.5, which comes out near 119 days. That screams longer lived cells which explains why the raw A1C ran a bit high. If the numbers go the other way, say lab A1C 6.0 and GMI 6.9, the estimate lands well under 106 days, pointing to shorter lived cells and a lab A1C that's probably too low for your true exposure. Is this perfect science for every case? No, but it's a powerful sanity check that keeps you from abandoning a plan that's helping. If you want a clinic ready plan, Here's the playbook I used. Step one, review CGM summary or a strong meter log. 
Step two, compare GMI to lab A1C. Step three, add a short window lab that ignores red cell lifespan. Fructosamine or glycosylated albumin reflect roughly the last two to three weeks. If GMI in those short window labs look good while A1C sits a bit high, you likely have longer lived cells and an A1C that's overshooting reality. If GMI in short window labs look worse while A1C looks pretty, you may have shorter lived cells and an A1C that's undershooting reality. Either way, you have an explanation and a direction. A few guardrails so we stay honest. Not every mismatch is a lifespan story. Iron deficiency, B12 or folate issues, certain hemoglobin variants, kidney disease, or anything that speeds or slows red cell turnover can skew A1C. If your numbers don't fit the pattern, that's a clinical conversation, not a YouTube diagnosis. Ask your clinician to consider iron studies and B12 or folate when appropriate, and to repeat A1C after obvious issues are addressed. If your clinic can estimate lifespan or uses a model that integrates CGM and A1C to report an adjusted value, great. If not, GMI plus a short window lab will still protect your decisions. Now let's translate this into what you can do this week. Start by gathering your truth, CGM average and time in range, or a two week meter log. Compute your GMI or let your app do it. Compare GMI to lab A1C. If they don't match, add fructosamine or a glycated albumin. If A1C is the odd one out while the other markers look great, use the normalization idea to explain the mismatch and stay the course. If multiple markers point the wrong way, tighten the plan. Dial in carbs, meal timing, sleep, stress, electrolytes, movement, and use medications wisely with your clinician. I'll land this plane with perspective. Numbers are tools, not judges. Use wisely, they inform. Use blindly, they intimidate. If your A1C surprised you, Brief. Use the calculation. For longer lived cells, multiply your lab A1C by 106 and divide by lifespan. Adjusted A1C goes down toward reality. For shorter lived cells, multiply by 106 and divide by lifespan. Adjusted A1C goes up towards reality. One formula, two directions. And if you don't know your lifespan, let your CGM derived GMI and a short window lab guide you. Our job isn't to defend a diet, it's to defend your health. When a dietary pattern is helping, we honor it with context. When it isn't, we change course with intention. That's grown up root cause medicine. And it's how you win the long game. I'll see you in the next video.